we will begin with two simple measures of variability, the range and the interquartile range. Range, abbreviated capital R, is the variability between the two most extreme scores in the distribution. Said more simply, range equals highest score minus lowest score. Now in some statistics textbooks, you will find a formula that the range equals the highest score minus the lowest score plus one. And there's a good reason to do that. But in the real world, the range is rarely used. And because it is so susceptible to outliers, a difference of one really doesn't matter that much. I prefer to keep it simple, just use high minus low. But if it makes you feel better to add the plus one, go for it. Let's take a look at three data sets that we have seen before. You may remember that the mean of each of these small data sets is six. But now, let's look at the range. Take the high score and subtract the lowest score. What is the range for the first data set? 12. How about the second data set? 4. And the third data set? 0. Here are three data sets, each with the same mean of 6, but wildly different ranges. There is much more variability in the first data set than there is in the third. The biggest advantage of the range is that it is easy to compute and it gives you a quick and easy measure of the variability in your data set. However, this is also its biggest drawback. It is a crude measure of variability. The range is highly susceptible to outliers, more susceptible than any other measure. It is wildly susceptible to outliers, and as sample size increases, range increases dramatically. So the range is used mostly with nominal and ordinal data. When the range is used with nominal data, it is mostly used for exploratory data analysis. For instance, if you were expecting to have four categories, but the range is 83 instead of four, then something is very wrong. One solution to the problem posed by the range is to instead use the interquartile range, abbreviated IQR. Quartile means quarter. To create quartiles of a data set, you divide the distribution into four equal sections, 25% each. The interquartile range, therefore, is the variability in the middle half of the distribution, ignoring the top 25% and the bottom 25% of the distribution. It is a measure of the variability between the first and third quartile, or the middle 50% of scores. The biggest advantage of the interquartile range is that it is not affected by outliers because it is describing the spread at the center of the data. To calculate the interquartile range requires three steps, although you can think of this as doing the same step three times. First, you do a median split on the upper and lower half of the distribution. Because the median is between three and four, we average to get a median of 3.5. Next, you do two more median splits, one for the lower half and another for the upper half. Finally, you subtract the lower median split from the upper. Nine minus three equals six. We can see that the range here is 19, but the interquartile range is six. Notice that the outlier, 20, greatly increases the range, but does not affect the interquartile range at all.